What's up everybody, it's Ivan with Trout's Fly Fishing back with another edition, special edition of Five Flies, the saltwater uh, species editions. Happy to have Alec Gerbeck from uh, Umpqua here. Thanks, I'm glad to be here. Dropping the knowledge, as always. Uh, so for this month, we're gonna do permit, a species near and dear to Alec's heart, a species less near and dear to my heart. <laughs> permit. I'm, I say that out of love. <clears throat> It's a love-hate relationship. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've leadered one, which doesn't count. Everyone says it counts. I don't think it counts. No picture, no fish. Exactly, especially on the first one. <laughs> like, that doesn't, there's no way. I, I, I disavow everyone who said that counted because it didn't count, I didn't hold it, you know? <laughs> so obviously, clearly, again, like last time, I'm the subject expert because I've hooked one. <clears throat> Alec, you've caught quite a few. I've caught quite what's a few, your, guided quite a few. Um, I don't keep count. Oh, thanks. Yeah. I, I, respect I, don't, that. I don't like to keep those fish on a pedestal like yeah. that. If you keep them there, it makes them harder to catch. So that, I respect that. It's just another thing. Quite a bit. So you guided in the Seychelles. Yep, I did a number of years in the Seychelles uh, where we had Indo-Pacific permit. Yeah. And then, yeah, I've done quite a bit of permit fishing around yeah. stateside too. Nice, cool. So Alex is gonna uh, sort of detail all the flies for this month, uh, where he likes to use them, how he likes to fish them, what applications uh, and the situations they're gonna succeed the best in. Um, so let's get to it. Fly number one, again, we're gonna start with a little love for Alec, just as we did with redfish, we're gonna start with Alec's uh, Aflexo Crab. The, uh, it's the new hot stuff in the streets. Everyone loves it. <laughs> Hard to get your hands Hard on. Hard to get your hands on. Yeah. You gotta put your orders in soon. If you if you're going if you're going to fish for permit, you gotta put your orders in because they are uh, hard to come by. But it's worth worthwhile uh, featuring from my perspective. I saw three permit caught on uh, during a week, and I this is the one I hooked mine on. So uh, I have a lot of love for this fly. You did a fly tying video. Link up there. Uh, tell us about the flexo in a sort of a briefer format than the. Uh, yeah, so uh, we designed in the Seychelles uh, for those Indo-Pacific permit as well as the trigger fish. Uh, but we have now seen great results uh, on this side of the pond. So places like Cuba, uh, Mexico, Belize, Honduras, uh, yeah. people starting to catch a lot of fish on these. We offer it in tan, olive, or white. Uh, but yeah, a nice fly that lands softer with that kind of transparent body. Yeah. Um, the Alflexo crab. Gets down quick. Gets down quick without making a big slap on the water. Yeah, always key for this tricky permit. Uh, when you present a crab fly like that, how do you like to present? Does it depend on the fishery? Um, uh, yes, definitely depends on the fishery a little bit. Um, yeah. Depth of water, fish's behavior. Is he feeding on a ray? Is he cruising? Is he scavenging? You know, there's a couple different scenarios. So. Uh, you know, if he is just kind of poking around, staying pretty close, but dipping his head every once in a while, I'm going to try to present to him within about two foot uh, when his yeah. head is down. I'm going yeah. to make that cast. Yeah. Um, hopefully his head comes up as your fly is dropping, and then you can kind of just yeah. keep in tension. Gotcha. Cool. So generally, uh, with a permit, you're casting like a hula hoop, right? Yes. Less than a hula hoop? Like a hula hoop for a third grader or a hula hoop for like a... So, Fat or Eva? <laughs> like which hula hoop are you? Every guide's different too. You, yeah. You're going to go to some place and he's going to tell you to make a big lead or whatever. Like, uh, there's no one guideline, but yeah, Fair. yeah, you got to get in their path so it's going to cross their face. Okay, you never want it coming towards them as they're stripping. That's not natural for the crab. Right. So just lining yourself up to where that that crab is going to cross him some way, shape, or form in a fleeing fashion away from him. Generally closer to the bottom, will they eat mid-column for the, like what's the word? So they yeah, like if you have a cruising fish or a fish on a stingray, I, I, plenty of times I've seen fish chow as that fly is hit or on its way down. So yeah. it's always important to just stay in contact with your fly yeah. once you put it in water. One, one of the things I remember guide, the guides telling me down in Cuba is you don't want it to be uh, swimming up. Is that something that you found to be correct? Who knows? Again, Who yeah, knows? it's yeah. neither here nor there. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, there it is. Listen to your guide. Fly, yeah, right. As <laughs> always, just listen to your guide. Fly number one, the afflexive crab. Fly number two is the kung fu crab. Alec, talk to us about the kung fu crab. 
The Kung Fu Crab is a signature fly by, by Eddie Wyatt. Um, great fly for kind of that defensive uh, profile, if you will. So you saw the fly before, it's kind of a side swimmer. This one is in that defensive position with some really uh, accentuated claws. So uh, this is gonna be great on the drop as well as it's stripping away that fish just seeing that crab-like uh, yeah. profile. Um, fish is great down in Belize, uh, parts of Mexico, Cuba, cool. Florida. The, uh, was the more defensive crab, are you gonna present that different than a side swimmer? Uh, I'm going to probably strip it a lot less. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to keep it in the zone yeah. and just let that fish maybe find it before I move gotcha. it. Like it's it's on defense, not moving. Come and get me. Sort of yeah, thing. come and get me. Yeah, yeah. Cool. All right. Fly number two, Kung Fu Crab. All right. Fly number three is the improved Merkin. It's a keys fly, right? Yeah, keys fly. Cool. Um, we do make it down to a size six now though too, so it does have some play in some other places where you yeah. see some smaller crabs. A uh, little backstory, the Merkin's probably the most famous permit fly out there, Del Brown pattern. Um, this is an improved Merkin that we've decided to do, just changing out some of the materials um, and then just improving upon the tie so it's a little more durable and presents a little bit better. Um, and then also adding a weed guard option to it. Yeah. As you know, I'm a big weed guard advocate. You yeah. can always cut this off right. if, you, if you don't like it, but yeah, it's a nice, nice improvement on the Merkin. Um, cool. It's had so much success over the years. Yeah, it's a classic. Even I know about it, which yep. says something, yeah. <laughs> uh, so you made it sort of a allusion to uh, the difference between size of crabs for the different fisheries. If we're talking stateside or the Atlantic, the Gulf of Mexico, whatever you want to say, um, the keys, fl keys flies seem to be bigger, and as you go to Mexico and, and uh, Belize, they tend to get smaller. Is that generally what you see? Like, is that a general rule of thumb for? Yeah, absolutely. The so yeah, like uh, keys, Bahamas, they're foraging Cuba. on bigger yeah, stuff. Um, huge. And then as you work your way south, Mexico is pretty shrimpy in general. The guys definitely still fish crabs, like yeah. we were talking about. But uh, yeah. and then yeah, as you get into Belize, it's, it starts getting quite small. You yeah. can still catch them on bigger crabs at times, but then you start getting into the kind of six size six range uh, in right. Belize. Right. Sixes and eights. Yeah, eights if I you got them. Yeah. yeah, it's a scary hook to be fishing for permit. Yeah, but. it's terrifying. <laughs> but God had confidence in it, so it was uh, easier to fish when, when they were like, yeah, you should fish that. Like, okay, absolutely. God eats and didn't catch them, it was great. Love permit, they're the best. Fly number four is the raghead crab. Personally seen fish eat this in Belize. Uh, talk to us about the raghead crab. So yeah, this is another kind of one of those classics. It's been around for a long time. Main difference with the raghead though, is you can see legs and stuff are pretty short. So it, it's always gonna keep a nice big profile of uh, that crab shape. Um, as opposed to some of the other flies where it's gonna have lots of movement, those legs are going everywhere. This is always yeah. kind of that starfish look, if you will. Yeah, yeah. Um, surprise look. Surprise oh. look, yeah. Um, so anyway, it's gonna keep that uh, profile as it's dropping into the water column, and then just being smaller in size, it's gonna have less of a footprint when you're casting yeah. it. Um, definitely main fisheries for these guys are gonna be Mexico, Belize, things like that, but I know guys are fishing them all over the place, so sure. definitely a, a standard to have in your box. With, uh, with less sort of garnish, is it uh, harder to catch it, like catch on coral or like sort of get a weird presentation? It, um, it's gonna swim really true because there's a lot less things to make it kind of maybe keel off to one side right. or the other. Um, and then yeah, just less water absorption, so it's right. gonna sink a little bit quicker for you. Cool, nice, there we go. Fly number four, the raghead crab. Fly number five is the flats crab. Uh, popular in Belize, I know that for a fact. Uh, tell us a little bit more about the flats crab, Alec. So it, this is definitely the number one fly to have in Belize. When you get on the boat, your guide will automatically grab this almost every single time yeah. out of your box. Um, yeah, designed down there by it's a long- the RS2 of- uh, <laughs> Yes, exactly. <laughs> of Belize, cool. <laughs> Comes in a couple different fashions. Uh, you're gonna have the tan with the brown legs. So you're gonna have an olive with kind of a, a creamy gray leg. 
Uh, and then we just launched a modeled version. So you're gonna have tan with brown body, brown legs, and then olive with chartreuse body, brown legs. Anyway, lots of variation. What I like about this guy though is this is a nice palette for you to work with. You, if you bring some markers with you and your yeah. guide doesn't like just that cream colored, you can mark it up however you want yeah. with olive, with brown, whatever. So nice fly to make it have. Yours. Yeah, make right. it yours, exactly. Cool. Uh, so before we sort of wrap this up, uh, you obviously had quite a bit of experience in the Seychelles and you've also fished quite a bit uh, on the Atlantic side. Talk to us about the differences that you've seen between the Indo-Pacific permit that you find in the Seychelles and then the ones you f we find uh, fisheries we most frequent here uh, around the states. Absolutely, so I guess kind of the biggest difference I saw from fishing over in the Seychelles to here is how aggressively these fish will come to flies. Um, in the Seychelles, often our strip was a consistent long strip, keeping yeah. it away from that fish, really making him kind of finish on it. Uh, whereas, you know, places here often, it's all about the drop and right. then these small little kind of- Little keep, checks. Yeah, yeah, little checks, keeping intention sort right. of thing. Right. Uh, that being said, you know, if you find them on a stingray, this side, yeah. you, you can definitely get them yeah. quite aggressive, and they'll come way off for it and something yeah. like that. I've so. seen, I've seen that personally uh, when I was in Cuba with Tucker. Yeah, he had a fish on, two fish on stingers that he caught, and one of them, legitimately, the cast was short, and I'm not going to say how short it was, but it was short, and that fish turned like 90 degree angle <laughs> and busted his ass <laughs> over to the place grab and smashed it. It was like, I didn't think that was the way permit worked, yeah. and then he had another one that was just like twirling around this uh, this ray for what seemed like an hour. It was, wasn't an hour, it was clearly like five minutes, but yes, they very ha much happier than the ones that I saw in, in Belize, but different kind of happy. Yeah, right. uh, the other thing I'd say is just kind of water clarity and the substrate our fish were in the Seychelles for the most part. Uh, on the atoll I mainly guided, it was a lot of white sand fishing, so yeah. very obvious to see the fish, but they could very obviously see you, so right. often you ran into more than one fish together, that was too many eyes on the job. Uh, yeah. Good luck, you might as well be laying down <laughs> trying to cast at them, because they, they can see you. One spooks, the rest yeah, of them Yeah, they're spook, all yeah. looking. So. You wanted singles yeah. in the yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> I suppose like, you get more schools in like Mexico, Belize, and that sort of stuff. Yeah. What's, uh, what's the, what are the keys like for people who haven't been to the keys? Uh, so yeah, th those fish over there, there's a lot of kind of little grass pancake flats that they are often found on now, d depending on how high or low you are on the yeah. keys. But yeah, those fish are gonna come up and feed right on top, but then they're also gonna be chilling on the edges as uh, water starts getting a little too shallow for those pancakes. Okay. Um, then you often will see really big fish on the sides there. Yeah. Uh, it can surprise you, you often look like a jack. Uh, but yeah, they're gonna act just the same as everyone else. Right. They're terrible things to fish for. Yeah, um, yeah, but when you get them, it's cool. Yeah. That's what I've heard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So that's five flies for permit. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Uh, go, if you haven't, go chase the black tailed devil, as they're called. I call them, no, I'm not gonna say what I call them. They're the worst. I also like them a lot. Can't wait for my next trip. Alec, appreciate you stopping by for this edition. Absolutely. We're gonna switch shirts for the next episode. No, we're not. <laughs> All right.